By 1930, aircraft manufacturers had encountered the displacement limit of single-row radial engines with a practical maximum of 3.4 liters per cylinder due to air cooling constraints. To build larger and more powerful engines, multiple rows of cylinders became necessary. During this period, both Wright and Pratt and Whitney developed various twin-row engines, with the North Carolina-based firm initiating the development of an unexceptionally large 18-cylinder engine. This significant advancement ultimately led to the creation of the engine responsible for dropping atomic bombs on Japan, although it initially presented considerable risk for pilots. The work on the R3350 engine commenced in January 1936, and by May 1937, they had successfully conducted the first test run of the engine. The base architecture was done, but the engine was far from ready for an aircraft. However, during this period, the focus was primarily on the development of a smaller 14 cylinder R2600 twin cyclone engine, and progress on the duplex cyclone was slow, mainly due to its intricate complexity. In fact, early versions were plagued by major reliability and running issues, including crankshaft vibrations, inefficient cooling, and destroying exhaust valves. The United States Army Air Corps issued a contract for the construction of a long-range, heavy-load bomber capable of carrying a 20,000-pound bomb. Major aircraft manufacturers like Boeing, Lockheed and Douglas were waiting for the powerful R-3350 engine, which, alongside the contracted bomber, accelerated progress of the engine. The production of the R-3350 engine was so extensive and significant that a dedicated manufacturing line was established exclusively for this engine. The R-3350 engine took its maiden flight in 1941 and was ready to be handed over to the aircraft manufacturers for further aircraft development. However, by 1943, when the commissioned heavy bomber, the Boeing B-29 Superfortress, was already airborne, the engine encountered significant operational and reliability issues. First, let's delve into the engine itself. The duplex cyclone, as it was christened, was an 18-cylinder radial engine using a two-speed supercharger to boost performance at all altitudes. Despite being more compact than European aircraft engines, its design posed challenges that engineers had to grapple with. The R3350 shared the same cylinder dimensions as its small 14-cylinder counterpart, featuring 3-litre cylinders with a bore of 155mm and stroke of 160mm, resulting in a 30% increase in displacement. The engine boasted a three-piece four-steel crankcase housing a twin journal crankshaft with master and slave-style connecting rods, which spun on three roller bearings. The pistons ran in aluminum cylinders with steel liners, capped with cast aluminum cylinder heads, featuring a pushrod design with two valves per cylinder. Although the engineers were initially confident about solving issues related to the crankshaft construction, engine cooling and vibrations, they encountered unexpected challenges. To address some of these issues, additional counterweights were added to the engine. However, the R3350 experienced cooling problems with the rear cylinders, primarily due to limited clearings between the cylinder baffles and cowling. Engineers made various modifications to enhance low-speed cooling, including incorporating sodium-filled exhaust valves. Another serious concern was the high flammability of the magnesium content in the crankcase alloy, making the engine hazardous to itself. It was also known to eat up its own valves on a daily routine. During the development of the Superfortress, 
A prototype tragically caught fire and crashed due to an engine failure, resulting in the loss of all crew members. The R3350 proved to be a maintenance nightmare and was responsible for numerous catastrophic failures, which the company struggled to resolve for an extended period. One of the initial issues with the engine was related to fuel delivery, as early versions were equipped with Bendix thrombic carburetors that could not distribute fuel evenly. This problem was rectified through the implementation of direct injection much later, near the end of the World War II. It also led to an increase in the engine's overhaul time from 100 to 400 hours. After the war, the R3350 engine underwent significant advancements and found successful application in commercial aircraft, such as the Lockheed Constellation. Notably, a turbocompound version was developed, which efficiently recycled up to 20% of exhaust energy, providing an additional 500 horsepower. This innovation resulted in a comparable fuel consumption to the Pratt & Whitney R2800, while delivering significantly higher power albeit with a slight increase in weight of about 100 kg per engine. The engine's reliability and the mean time between overhauls improved considerably, reaching an impressive 3500 hours with a fuel efficiency of 34%. The peak of the R3350 development culminated in a 3800 horsepower version, and during the Renault Air race, several racers employed this engine achieving power levels exceeding 4,000 horsepower. During its time, the Dublex Cyclone proudly held the title of the largest aircraft piston engine until it was eventually surpassed by a different beast, a 28-cylinder Pratt & Whitney. Nevertheless, the R3350 remained an unparalleled achievement in aircraft piston engineering. The total production of nearly 30,000 units showcased its immense significance in the aviation industry. Despite its initial flaws, the R3350 played a crucial role during the war and beyond, contributing to the eventual end of the conflict. Many aircrafts owe their existence and success to this remarkable engine.